show for today. The topic is the NAACP in 2008 challenges and opportunities. And earlier we spoke with uh, Reverend uh, Dr. Kimbrough dealing with the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and how he became involved in the uh, National Association. And now we have with us Reverend uh, Andrew Wardle, uh, a student at Tennessee State University who is also involved with the NAACP as a member of the, uh, in the uh, Tennessee State University chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And of course, uh, Reverend Wharton, let me uh, welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Thank you. And of course, let me uh, tell you not only how delighted we are to have you, but it's seldom that we have a young man or young woman uh, dealing with uh, some of the critical issues that we're dealing with, but we recognize that it is the young people today who will have to uh, deal with the issues that Dr. Kimbrough pointed out as being on the forefront in terms of the NAACP. Let's look at uh, your background and education and some of the things that eventually brought you to the uh, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People chapter at Tennessee State University. Well, I was born and raised here in Nashville, Tennessee. I graduated from a uh, Christian private school, Davidson Academy, mm -hmm. and I had gone there my whole life. I had went there my whole life, 14-year mm -hmm. senior. Mm -hmm. And later on, when I received a calling, I wasn't sure if it was a real calling or mm -hmm. not. I would know I was chosen to give a message, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until later that I felt that I was truly called. But Dr. Kimbrough, who we've spoken to earlier, mm -hmm introduced me into the NAACP mm -hmm. and that's how I got involved into it in the first place mm -hmm. and what really what we really do in the NAACP as far as our church we have NAACP church services mm -hmm. sometimes they go on near youth day mm -hmm. and for instance we have certain voting times mm -hmm. and we try to get everybody to vote on the same day and mm -hmm. so forth mm -hmm. and one of the struggles at our church is getting more people to vote, mm -hmm. especially the youth. Mm -hmm. Now, when I turned 18, I couldn't wait to vote okay. mm -hmm. because I know that voting equals voice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Dr. Kimbrough and Pastor Bowman, our mm -hmm. pastor, Reverend Raymond Bowman, mm -hmm. he asked if anyone was not registered to vote. And I was embarrassed mm -hmm. at first because I raised my hand and I was the only person in the church with my hand raised. But later on, mm -hmm. I figured I didn't care because mm -hmm. it needs to happen sometime or another. Mm -hmm. And I want to vote as many times as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, being 18 and uh, just starting to vote is, is the only time that you could really vote. I mean, you might not have been registered, but the very fact that you could become involved in the process. Now, what do you think, uh, being a young person yourself, and understanding that up until this season, I think, that most young people were not that interested in the political process. What do you think that uh, is the reason for that? And what can we do in order that we might be able to motivate our young people to understand how very, very significant the NAACP is as well as the political process is, that they participate in the political process? I believe that the reason they are not inspired to participate in the political process is because they don't particularly believe in the change that voting could bring. Mm -hmm. I mean, to a young person, you might say, what can one vote do? Mm -hmm. You know, I have my family voting, I have my cousins voting, I have mm -hmm. my adoptive parents voting, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just a kid, I'm only 18 years old. Mm -hmm. What is voting really going mm -hmm. to do? Mm -hmm. I believe that they do not vote because they do not see mm -hmm. the big picture. Mm -hmm. If they would look at it, vote equals a voice, mm -hmm. then it would change everything. Voting has to do with just about everything nowadays mm -hmm. if you want a voice. We're having issues in school. We need funding for elementary school, mm -hmm. high school, colleges. Mm -hmm. We have environmental problems mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so we've got the, the, all the issues are still there and, 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 and you believe that if more young people became involved in the whole process, that uh, it might not change that much, but certainly it would have to uh, be a change because of the number that could be involved. Is that it? I do. Vote mm -hmm. equals change. I was talking to one of my workers the other day, and I asked them if they, who were they were going to vote for mm -hmm. in this upcoming presidential election, mm -hmm. and they said, I'm not, I don't vote. I'm mm -hmm. not going to vote at all. And mm -hmm. I said, why not vote? Mm -hmm. And they said, because I don't want to be blamed for about which 
candidate that mm -hmm. I picked for, and if they win, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to be have the blame on me because mm -hmm. I voted mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. person. Does that, does, that, does that seem to be a logical kind of reason not to vote to you, though, Reverend, even though, you know, you know, it might be young people. Is that, does that make sense? When I was a lot younger, I thought that that might be a logical reason, but mm -hmm. I definitely mm -hmm. do not now mm -hmm. because this was a grown woman that mm -hmm. I had talked to, and I just don't believe it's any excuse. But mm -hmm. once again, she may not know what mm -hmm. voting does. Mm -hmm. And I figure, you know what? She deserves to vote just like anybody else. She mm -hmm. pays her taxes, mm -hmm. doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. she deserves to vote. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and whether win or lose, this, the, the vote is still very, very important. Yes. You know, uh, uh, one of the things that we find in terms of dealing with uh, uh, institutions of higher education is that there's a reluctance on the part of uh, young people like yourself to become involved. Now, what, what, what can we do in order to strengthen their uh, participation in this political process, this upcoming political season? I believe that we need to emphasize the importance of it everywhere we go, mm -hmm. not just in church, not just in marches, mm -hmm. but in elementary schools mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. from kindergartners on up, mm -hmm. we have to sponsor these things everywhere, whatever it takes mm -hmm. to get their attention in the right way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Very good. Excuse me. Now, I think we, uh, we, we'll uh, have our second uh, commercial break here very, very soon, uh, Reverend. And uh, what I would like to do uh, during this final segment is to uh, deal with an individual who has some information dealing with environmental issues, because I think that the NAACP uh, has now gone on record as being, uh, as understanding how very, very important these environmental issues are. But in case uh, that does not materialize, we would uh, want you and uh, Dr. Kimbrough to return and to uh, sort of give us uh, an overview one from an individual who has been been involved in this process for a long time and another from a younger individual who has just become involved in it and perhaps we might be able to get uh, sort of an interchange between the two of you that would be helpful not only to the uh, young people who become involved in this process but would also be helpful to all of the others perhaps even to that young lady who uh, whom you mentioned earlier that uh, felt that she didn't want to be responsible for whoever they might put in and, and then to somehow make her understand that she's going to be responsible whether they win or whether they lose if she votes. And of course, that's, 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 I think that's what we want to try to do, to simply highlight the importance of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. We again have been...